Warning, this podcast contains bad English, bad jokes and incomprehensible references to Italian culture. Competent music podcast. No. Welcome to the most uh, incompetent podcast uh, ever in the history of podcasts. Hi, everyone. But only regarding music. Because yes, we are very, very good in everything else except music. Yes. Probably. Absolutely. Probably. Arguably, let's say. We can't prove it in this way. <laughs> yes, yes. Absolutely. How are you doing? Fine. Mm, fine too. Uh, breathing. Eating. Uh, I have uh, a nice biorhythm. I have to say, uh, my horoscope said that it was a good day. So uh, I will say <laughs> uh, very well. Very well. If the horoscope says that, it's fine. I'm really excited, guys, not only for today's episode, but also because tomorrow, no, not tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, I'll be going to see a Nano Wars concert. Oh. Wow. Awesome. That would be hopefully great. I have to say they are awesome in concert. I'm really looking forward. So uh, I want to say also that I went to a concert uh, since the last recording of the podcast uh, that was incredibly cool. And I went to see Kimbra. I don't know if you, to, to know her. The the one who collaborated with Gautier for uh, somebody who I used to know. Yeah, exactly her. Uh, I win. It was an amazing concert. I totally recommend uh, to, to see her. Uh, she came out with the new album recently. So, uh, awesome. Awesome live performer. Uh, amazing voice. Uh, amazing experimentation. Uh, there was also a real drummer playing the drums. So even though she's uh, she's a lot in uh, electronic music, uh, amazing groove, uh, uh, awesome. Wow. That's it. But wow. uh, yeah, maybe maybe it can be a, she can be a good good candidate for the new record to review. I don't know. I'll see. Who knows? Why not? Who knows? That's interesting. Also, uh, an Italian electronic rock band, Subsonica. I heard an interview from their uh, drummer, and th- they're a lot into electronic, and he also said that after experimenting with uh, electronic drums and sounds uh, with samples uh, for 30 years, then the, the, his final decision was, okay, I'll just go with the acoustic set. I'll just go with acoustic drums, and th- that works the best. So that's an interesting trend that a lot of people are uh, are going to also in trap music, for example. That's interesting. Well, also the the Pashmota, they they have a real drum kit live uh, since the nineties, isn't it? They stop using drum so, machines. Cool. Mm-mm-mm. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> but what about people like me that cannot play the drums? <laughs> you are so unfair. <laughs> You need to hire a drummer. <laughs> That's the only solution. Francis. No, what? Get behind <laughs> Sorry? that set. Come on. <laughs> Conflict of interest. <laughs> Stop slacking and pretending to be a parent. Play the bloody drums. <laughs> you're right. You're right. Very well. Very well. It's probably time to move so to some uh, incompetent news. Of course. Totally. Totally. Totally incompetent news. So, uh, 
Francis, what can you tell us? Yeah. What's new in the world? I can tell you something that is not particularly new, but interesting, by the way. I found it uh, only recently, so it's new for me. <laughs> Basically, I found this uh, uh, piece of news that tells us that uh, Baby Metal, if you don't know them, they are uh, a Japanese uh, duo, or trio, I think duo, of uh, they used to be young kids uh, singing in a kawaii way and with a very heavy metal, death metal uh, um, music. That's very Japanese, just to start. Of course, they grew, grew up. And uh, there's a very interesting news because they decided in their uh, uh, new uh, concerts in uh, January, so it, uh, it already happened, uh, you, you mentioned that they, they are kawaii, so th- now they are 40, in their 40s, and are they still kawaii? <laughs> that, that's my question. <laughs> or usually kawaii band that, that they don't expire when they become 18. <laughs> they never get old, you know them. <laughs> no, of course the answer is they are still kawaii, but they are not in their 40s, they are mostly, I think, uh, teenagers now, I don't think sold i i don't i have no idea but of course we are incompetent so basically they decided that in their new uh concert uh, there is this uh, silent mosh pit uh, which is an area in which basically in a metal concert you cannot uh, uh, do mosh pits but even uh, just shouting cheering or talking loudly, and any kind of this uh, behavior is completely uh, forbidden, and if, of course is, uh, is taught uh, for people who have small children, uh, that they are not confident with their physical strength, uh, and this kind of, I mean, uh, it, it can happen in, uh, in a metal concert, but usually uh, you just stay in a, in a protected environment. That's wh- where I want to stay in any concert, especially where uh, <laughs> concert where there are uh, I don't know like uh, uh, pop concert with Harry Styles. I would like an area <laughs> like that in which I can listen to Harry Styles without having crazy girls uh, shouting, uh, jumping. I want to sit, drink my cup of tea, <laughs> maybe a shortbread, enjoying. <laughs> And uh, watermelon sugar high. I want to be there, <laughs> relax without any pressure from any teenager crazy shouting. So I, I'm totally approving this. And just listen to your beautiful Justin Bieber concert. Yeah, why not? Why? I thought he retired. No, I I don't know. He is probably in his forties, like the baby metal. I don't know. <laughs> So that's very Japanese, I would say, definitely. And I'll be honest, after going to a Gent concert uh, in, like, 2018, where I basically uh, risked my life, I, <laughs> I'm i starting to understand this kind of stuff, honestly. I'm very curious about the Gent concert, anyway. They were Death Rage. Okay, okay. Nice. They, they're really, really good live. They're really amazing. If you survive uh, I also that. got to know... I, I don't know how, honestly, because I was also in the third row, and, my God, I, I still have PTSD memories, post-traumatic flashbacks, uh, like Vietnam <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> I wake up at night screaming and thinking I'm at a, at a Death Church concert. So... <laughs> Any other news, guys? Okay. Uh, I, I think I, I, you told me to read uh, a piece of paper. So I'm <laughs> going to read uh, a piece of paper read that it. you <laughs> gave me earlier. So I'm reading Nickelback bassist Mike Kroger reacts to seeing Meshuga Live. iPhone fans, we are killing each other. HTTPS column double slash loudwire.com slash nickelback iphone mic okay. 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 uh, that was the url Sh- that, that, that's what you told me to read 
Yeah, so it's a bit <laughs> unclear to me. I don't understand what it means. Uh, uh, I mean, that, <laughs> that, that's a link to the website. Uh, it was. That, that it I was, have to read. Yeah. Okay, so uh, let me... Also, you don't put it uh, like an hyperlink. I have to copy and paste, in, paste it in, in the browser. <laughs> Yeah, uh, because it was uh, a hyped piece of paper. So. I, 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 per, I, I per, paper, I per, <laughs> So let me read uh, here. So Nickelback. So I'm reading uh, from another website that we are so incompetent that we cannot even summarize this in our own way. But uh, Nickelback are not strangers uh, uh, to the heavy stuff, and bassist Mike Kroger managed to catch Meshuga on their fall tour. The, the, the fall, the fall the oh. season, not that they fall uh, oh, on the okay. floor. Uh, is uh, now offered to uh, his uh, reaction to seeing them live, uh, blown away by not just the band but their mosh happy fans as well. Okay, Izzy, you can skip to the fourth paragraph. <laughs> okay, thanks. Uh, fourth, uh, the one that starts with the I saw my sugar. Yeah, definitely. Okay. <laughs> I saw Meshuga play at the uh, Hammerstein Barroom in uh, New York City. Uh, he recalls the transcript by uh, Bob Bubbler Moore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have a suggestion for you. So Please, Please uh, so Francis, read it. <laughs> <laughs> It was very interesting. I just wanted to see how it was going to to end. <laughs> no, basically, the Nickelback basis said that he's very uh, he's a friend of uh, Thomas Hake or Hoke, I don't know the pronunciation. Who is the drummer from Meshuga? So he went to see uh, their gig, and he basically had my experience with the mosh pit. <laughs> so I just saw people trying to kill each other. I said. What's going on? And of course, the the Nickelback uh, audience is not like that. Of course, maybe also Baby Metal was there. So, <laughs> so they say, "Oh no, 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 no! Please, we just you know, let's protect our people because you know." And the, I mean, I know that uh, the Nickelback concerts are all people with their table, their little uh, china with the tea and. Uh, <laughs> A spoonful of sugar and the medicine <laughs> goes down. Uh, sorry, that's another thing. <laughs> Definitely Bo- boomer reference. Don't don't forget the semi skin. Uh, semi skin. God, semi-skin. the joke the joke is gone. Don't forget <laughs> this. <laughs> <laughs> Today is so crap. I'm so crap. Let uh, me <laughs> Um, uh, don't forget the semi skim uh, uh, semi skim the milk Uh, that's supposed to be a joke it didn't go so let's move on (laughs) let's keep on and forget (laughs) about it okay yeah yeah well i i think it's time to move on to the review what do you say yeah life moves on let's be incompetent on our thing let's go Incompetent. Totally incompetent review. Well, so uh, this uh, album we're going to talk about today uh, will be, it's kind of their will of the people by Muse. So. Uh, but uh, we we talked about this before, isn't it? We there was a spoiler. There was a spoiler that Francis did uh, a few episodes ago. Like I guess in the first one, uh, just right away. <laughs> yes, I'm mind blown by Francis <laughs> because it's a, such a spoiler that started from the first episode and yes. then has been spoiled. Uh, on episode six, right? Wow! It was all in my plan. Yeah, God. It, it, it's like uh, the Chekhov's uh, spoiler. I don't know if you are. <laughs> 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 if there's a spoiler, there will be. 
<laughs> if you hit somewhere, the spoiler must shoot. Yeah, I guess it's something like that. Anyway. So, uh, yeah, the band is Muse. The record is uh, Will of the People. Yeah, so let's talk about it. What do you say? Uh, how much are we late from the release of the record this time? I have to say we are just... Uh, uh, I'm counting on my finger. Seven months late, so I guess it's quite honest. Uh, uh, g- given our standards, I guess it's uh, very... I think it's a record for us, guys. <laughs> it's the most recent thing. I'm not sure. <laughs> I, I guess record. Jack White could... Maybe uh, we were closer. Maybe. Not that sure, but maybe. Uh, we were close with Jack White, but uh, the, the, he released a new album. <laughs> In the meantime, yes, of <laughs> <Exactly>. course. So, <laughs> yeah, we're closer, but how that plays out. But anyway, it's fine. So <laughs> let, let's keep this as the record. It's the latest album and the closest to them. Wow. Amazing. Perfect. Perfect. Let's introduce the band. I mean, I think everyone knows the uh, Muse, but let's just give an introduction for those who don't. Uh, So the band members joined forces in 1992, and the lineup never changed since. Uh, uh, They are uh, Matthew Bellamy as the singer, guitarist, and main songwriter. Uh, Chris Wolstenholm uh, as bassist and this is still a a nice thing because Matthew Bellamy every time he has to present him given his uh, surname that's quite unpronounceable he every time he says something different like uh, Chris (laughs) Wolstenholm or something like that very nice uh, guy Uh, I didn't know this wow (laughs) uh, please uh, listen to Munich Jam (laughs) <laughs> on YouTube, and uh, he will he present him like uh, Chris uh, von Stinkelstein on the base. Something like that. <laughs> and the third <laughs> guy is Dominic Howard. He's the drummer, and they were since the beginning. They are Muse. Never the lineup never changed. Their music is quite eclectic. Yeah, it's it. Do you want to say something? Uh, no, no. I, I wanted to say that uh, they should uh, a bit, uh, I don't know, arrest the bass player a bit like a porcupine tree, in my opinion. Just, <laughs> just to make <laughs> things more hilarious. I, but, I, I guess the surname thing is, is the beginning of the mocking. And, uh, it's the beginning <laughs> of uh, excluding him from the record. <laughs> yeah, probably. That's all. The next record. Hey, okay. guys. Uh, I mean, bullying uh, uh, bassists is an important issue, guys. Please, uh, Please be sensitive it. about it. it. It's important. <laughs> about okay. They yeah. want to do that. They play bass. So, yeah, it's kind of... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> That's the issue. <laughs> so, as I was saying, they are really... minute i agree uh, just for just for the re- record uh we lost tanto yeah i think probably his track is going on yeah yeah let, let's him. probably let it go let it go let it go let it go okay. and, and then i'm back finally i'm leaving a lot of messages to you easy when i'm while i'm disconnected <laughs> <laughs> you will have me greeting you and stuff. Anyway, thanks. Coming back to thanks to the thing. Let's start from here. I, I love you. So the band is uh, has its roots firmly firmly in the rock genre, but during the year they explored the uh, electronic, kind of operatic, classical, sometimes very hard rock. Let's say metal adjacent music. I can give a personal opinion on this. I think they are one of the few 
active bands that still tries to do something, uh, let's say new. Uh, Definitely. They, even though, I mean, they take a lot of ideas from the past, even from their, their selves, um, but from classical music, from old rock or, um, uh, yeah, songs they love and they may take some ideas and then mix and match everything and something new comes out and it's definitely news. You can say this is, <laughs> these are news. I want to come clean right away and kind of a muse bitch. So I'm a little biased. And oh, uh, so that's it. Uh, <laughs> do with it uh, whatever you want. So going to the record. Uh, so the Will of the People is the ninth studio record. Uh, as uh, we kind of hinted to, it was released on the 26th of August of 2022. And this date is quite important because a lot of the things in the lyrics of the, of the album are in some way uh, affected by whatever happened between the, the last release and, and this new one. It was produced by themselves and released through the label Helium 3, that's a subsidiary, subsidiary, whatever, however it's said, of Warner Bros. Uh, Helium 3 is their own label. Yes, it is around 37 minutes long, contains 10 songs. Pretty sure. Six of them were released as singles, so it's easier to say which are, were not released as singles, but anyway, <laughs> we can, uh, we'll talk about it later, probably. As usual, it spans a lot of genres, because they were going to a point where they are going to be recasted like a greatest hits, but they didn't want to do that. They said, okay, let's do a greatest hits with new songs that sound like the best of Muse. And Crazy. So given all of their experimentation during the years, it's really, they cover a lot of ground, uh, generally speaking. As I said, the themes are all related to the instability in the world and yeah, covering the usual themes of views that's anti-establishment and stuff like that uh let me recap a bit so you're saying that technically this album is a, a kind of a greatest hits of muse in a in in a certain way because th- there is one song that i want to talk about later uh, that I, I found very interesting in that sense yeah yeah uh, uh, in, just in, to drop a bit of a of a spice here you're spoiling or you are, uh, you are uh, hyping uh, the spoiler. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm hyping. I'm hyping with all of my hype. <laughs> yeah, the, the point is, yeah, in an interview, they said it was kind of the point where the record label was going to ask for a greatest hits. And, and in the end, it really feels like a, a greatest hits, but with new songs. It really feels like home and is new stuff and this can be sometimes i mean someone can feel uh, strongly about it like they are they did nothing new uh, kind of but uh, let's talk about it later indeed <laughs> indeed <laughs> so this is the main things about the album so i guess we can go on telling our impression about it. So I guess Idzi has already... Uh, or should we hype it and keep it for play? <laughs> uh, no, please, uh, go okay. on. Okay, okay let, let's drop the bomb. If we are talking about... Uh, go. Uh, sorry, I'm not very good in this kind of things. So <laughs> uh, there is a song that is uh, Kill or Be Killed. Which is uh, oh. actually one of the singles uh, that they released before uh, the release of the album, full album. Which yeah. uh, definitely, there is a riff, uh, the intro riff reminds me a lot of another Muse song. 
I didn't have time to do more research because I'm incompetent. So, but uh, definitely, it sounds a lot another old muse song. I don't know. Is it only my impression? Also, the voice melody. I think I had the exactly same impression in "Kill or Be Killed." It it, uh, it reminded me a lot of uh, something from Showbiz, their first album. I'm not sure about the exact song, but maybe Showbiz himself. Not sure. I don't know. I don't remember even what I ate from for breakfast, so I cannot <laughs> tell you wh- which one it is. But uh, uh-huh. when I was listening to it, uh, it reminds me a lot of that. But also just the the, the sound the mixing uh, the um, the timbre of the voice. It was very very like early muse. It sounded a lot like early muse in the verse. Then it just goes crazy. Now that you tell me the story about uh, the fact that uh, they wanted to create a, a new set of songs uh, with uh, a kind of inspiration from the old songs uh, that makes sense it will make sense yeah especially because uh yeah uh, there is a lot of uh arpeggiator in the in the chorus <laughs> which is uh, one of the classic uh music signature thing that um uh, been put in place uh, yeah in many songs in the past so no, that, that that's what I wanted to say about this. I have another thing I want to say about this, but I'll let you talk because uh, I'm a bit shy today. Well, hype, but, hype. but in general, what do you think about the record? Ah, in general. Okay, uh, you see that I'm already messing the order of everything. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I will say... It's I like it, but uh, I thought it sounds a super muse in terms that uh, it's full of all the signature things that they do, plus new stuff. But um, I have to say, in my opinion, I, I, I was expecting something a bit more original. But again, if the, their aim was to like uh, having a collection of uh, pictures of all the their career uh but trying to be to propose a new content uh, uh i mean uh, i understand the meaning now and uh, i will say it's a really good album i really enjoyed it easy to digest there are super cool stuff that happens in there in many songs uh and uh yeah i'm a big fan of muse as well but um yeah i love certain solos around but uh we'll talk in detail later francis uh anything that you want to add absolutely yeah uh i agree with uh with what you said it's 100 percent muse of course uh, and it really really um redefines uh Everything they already did in a completely new way, according to me. But it's definitely their, uh, their, their, their signature in this album. And I, I had a sort of parabolic experience with this album. I started at the first listening with, uh, okay, this is quite good, interesting. Then uh, about uh, around the second, third listening, I was like, okay, this is probably their best album ever. It's the greatest hits. Uh, really, it's really, it really is the greatest hits. And then uh, it, it, let's say that uh, with the uh, further listenings, it's settled with, uh, it's probably not their best album, but still among their best albums. It's one of the, their, their best works, according to me. I think uh, I personally didn't like a lot their previous album. What was the Simulation name? Theory. Simulation Theory. It, it, it went in a completely um, electronic kind of mood and it tried to follow the, let's say, the, the wave of the music uh, in 2020, 2019, uh, that was basically driving towards their way. And they came back, according to me, with uh, their previous style, but as it is said, with a slightly different turn. Yeah, I noticed that in the music in, uh, industry in the last few years, there has been this massive 80s revival. And uh, <laughs> if you didn't put the 80s revival 
you were out of the music industry. There is a uh, John Mayer that did the uh, 80s style uh, album, the the latest that release, uh, The Weeknd. Uh, they sound super uh, 80s. Uh, um, I don't remember, but uh, a lot of uh, of the artists in the last uh, two three years they did this uh, 80s revive. Oh. Or at least what we remember the eighties were, because it was not exactly that. <laughs> but still, not only. Yeah, yeah. There, there are a lot of lows uh, in terms of music in the eighties as well that uh, we tend to forget because we remember only Michael Jackson, Queen, uh, and uh, <laughs> the good stuff. Let's say the good stuff, but uh, there has been yeah. a lot of bad stuff too. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Anton, what's your opinion about this album? Well, as I said, it really feels like home. Feels like <laughs> uh, listening to something you know and but is new, and it's uh, really uh, I, and I really really enjoyed the the record. I mean, it it was on heavy repeat for me, like. It's also nice because you can do this nice game like uh, from which Muse record outtakes does this track <laughs> comes out, and uh, it, it's nice. It's a nice game. Like oh, yeah, this could be from Showbiz. This could be from Drones. This could be from Simulation <laughs> Theory or stuff like that. It's a nice game. And uh, but what I really loved at that. Um, I I really like the head banging part, and uh, they w- n- were never so heavy. I think, yeah, it was so metal. Uh, as <laughs> as Matthew Bellamy said, he, he really pushed on Domi on Dom to to go on the double pedal bass drum because. <laughs> Also, apparently, the son of uh, Matthew Bellamy is really into Slipknot, and uh, really, wow. yes, and, and they were like the the soundtrack from all their, uh, 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 let's say, when they were, he was bringing him to school and back, and they were going to listen to Wait and Bleed and stuff like that. Wow! So something sticked. Uh, on, the, <laughs> on this and uh, he al- also said uh, that they went uh, through their, their um, let's say the record collection and say what didn't we what we uh, what they didn't have or what they could do better and for example they said yeah we could we did some heavy stuff we could do it better Let's do kill or be killed, or uh, <laughs> so heavy and stuff like that. So yeah, I mean, it, it's uh, I, I think it's it's an awesome album. Yeah, it, it is right there between the best. Fun fact: I also found out that uh, Matt uh, Matt Bellamy's son is called Bing, like uh, the Microsoft <laughs> Research uh, <laughs> Engine. And we are closing the circle. <laughs> <laughs> the circle, exactly, <laughs> uh, because they they had their own um, the whole family uh, do the course in uh, in Will of the People. I found out the yeah, uh, yeah. credits. Yeah, I, I think we should ask a sponsorship uh, from Microsoft. Uh, <laughs> At this point, it makes a lot of dun, sense. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, no, that, that's Intel, <laughs> that's not Intel. Microsoft. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, anyway, I think it's a really nice journey through the whatever news has been it during the years. It's, it covers all of it, I think. Yeah, well, so I guess it's time for our top threes. Let's go. Definitely. Uh, Well, we have already talked about Kill or Be Killed, and it definitely is in my top three. I I guess also in yours, I don't know. (laughs) So basically, I was listening to this record, and uh, at some point, there's a a completely unexpected mosh pit song. (laughs) And it really blew me up. It's it's really, really amazing. So, uh, we already said that the verse sounds a lot like uh, first albums. 
from Muse. And uh, I personally found that uh, the bridge sounded a lot like System of a Down because there's uh, this opera singing with the Eastern melodies uh, and in the background you hear these uh, super heavy uh, super heavy guitar riffs and it really reminded me a lot of System. And uh, yeah, also I didn't expect uh, a double bass drum from uh, Dominic. And as you said, uh, it seems that Matthew Bellamy was the one who pushed for it. <laughs> yeah, uh, I have to say during the breakdown, when it's, they start chugging those power chords so violently, I need to make the face, you know, the one like... <laughs> That obviously you don't know because you're not looking, you're just hearing, but you know, <laughs> the face, the stank face, the, you know, the, the, the breakdown <laughs> the face, the breakdown face. Yeah, it's awesome. I loved it. It's definitely the act banger of the record, I would say. Yeah, but uh, still, it's not my favorite. Yeah, I yeah, love no, the we... song, but it's not my favorite. We, we, love, we know you're three. a sensitive soul. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm already an introvert, so I need uh, like minor chords, but with the ninth uh, sometimes, <laughs> uh, a minor seven to, to make me Nerd. feel a bit. <laughs> we love you okay. anyway. So Thanks. it's just tell one of yours. Mine, you won't believe it. Uh, I think uh, I'm going to be very controversial. Is compliance? Ooh. Because uh, I, I I don't know. I love the '90s dance vibe there. <laughs> I don't know. Is that songs that st- keep stuck in my head? Uh, I love the bass line, and uh, I have also a team in my company that is the compliance team, so I love every time that I talk with the compliance team, the song pop up in my head, and I start saying, <laughs> compliance! <laughs> so, oh my god, I hope they don't, don't dem- demonetize us with a figure I sang a bit of a song. Yeah, no, of no, no, totally. We have, okay. to, we have to cut. We have to yeah, cut. cut, cut uh, but uh, I don't know. Uh, it's a very good pop song, and uh, I think uh, it's one of the songs that uh, I would like to listen live. And I, I can imagine everyone jumping, singing this to a live concert. Yeah, I also think the bass line are awesome in this song. It's really yeah. what makes the song great. It's uh, it really has a huge groove. Great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it could come out, for example, this sounds really second low-ish. Mm. Mm-hmm. It's a nice I game. We should do the that. Same. <laughs> <laughs> Follow us on Twitch uh, to do the Muse game with us. <laughs> But uh, I, I, I don't remember anything, so I don't remember any, any single album. I have to re-listen them again to, to do the game. I, j- I already lost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, so I guess I can say one of mine. And uh, I really love the, let's call it the beep song. <laughs> the, the really long oh, we, we are beepity beeped we are beepity beeped we are beeky, beeping beeped <laughs> let's say we are f- f- and uh, yeah <laughs> it's it's really awesome track it really has this uh, I have to say the triplet feel in the end is really Knights of Sidonia feel mm-hmm. and I love it, so I love that too. I cannot do any. <laughs> but uh, it's also a nice thing to see how they progress from uh, like a pricing where they they never going to stop us. They're not going to break us. So we are going to... Uh, oh, yeah, we're going to win. And then the game is rigged. We are f***ing f***ed. So it's... Uh, this, <laughs> they're grown up. They're grown up. <laughs> I have to say, I studied a way to say the title of the the song without saying it, which is an expression of defeat and demise. Um, <laughs> but it doesn't work as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Well, in the end, he said he concentrated there all of his anxieties and whatever is happening in the world right now, and all of the instability and division in the West, particularly. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's my favorite song as well. It's one of my top three. And uh, um, my wife, uh, that is a very British, said that the way that uh, Matthew Bellamy says... Uh, uh, we are f- f- uh, is very British as well, so it feels uh, like uh, drinking a cuppa of tea. So, so that, that, that's why um, I love the song because it's so. Uh, it feels uh, so so because I can imagine American will say we are. F- f- uh, I said this. Uh, no, we are. F- <laughs> but you know that you are going to be Paul of it, so in the end we don't know the difference. Uh, yeah, uh, okay, know. but it's fine. I mean, it's it's that's it's, fine. I know. I know. As soon as I read the title of the song, I said that I was a. F- <laughs> f- so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but you can sing it with a cup of tea. With a cup of. Oh, of course, but uh, yeah, uh, I agree totally with you on to. Uh, regarding a song uh, love it love it and uh, yeah there is a definitely i uh, got your same references here as well so back to you francis okay it's my turn so uh at the, my second place uh, i have uh, something also a bit controversial uh, so it's ghosts because, uh, you know, I'm a headbanger, but I'm also a sucker for good emotional piano ballads. So I honestly liked it. I loved it also because the, 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 the lyrics are really, really good, according to me. And uh, you, you really feel what uh, Matt is, uh, is singing. And uh, also a guilty pleasure, I have to admit... Uh, uh, they released the two alternative versions, uh, one uh, with a French singer and another one with Elisa, which is one of our flagship uh, uh, singers around the world. And I honestly like the one with Elisa most uh, because I have to say they, she really creates harmonies that are unbelievable, according to me. She is always extremely good at creating harmonies and vocal uh, uh, lines that are really that completely fit the song. Only thing I have to say, I would have preferred if she sang in um, Italian, in in English, sorry, because she's really good at singing in English. But yet, uh, it's great, according to me. I'm totally on the opposite uh, side of the spectrum. <laughs> I really didn't like uh, the uh, version featuring with Elisa. What about the Ghost in general or the Elisa version? Uh, uh, no, I love Ghost uh, with okay. uh, with uh, the, the original version. With Elisa, I found... I was expecting, with the fact that she's a, a great artist, uh, to uh, sometimes I had the feeling that uh, it was... Uh, the same song, they remove Matthew Bellamy voice and they put <laughs> Elisa injected in. Rather than I was expecting maybe to, to simply re record the voice together in order to create a, something a bit extra on it mm-hmm. in terms of something a bit different. Instead, uh, I felt like uh, it was uh, Elisa, which is a great singer uh, at a kara- karaoke. So that, that's my, <laughs> my point of view. Um, Which uh, is still very good. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, uh, she, 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 uh, uh, I mean, she's a great singer. I can imagine she's standing at the karaoke. But uh, uh, and the other thing that you know, like, I agree. Uh, I, I was expecting her to sing in English too, and uh, I have the feeling that the lyrics don't match between uh, the, the meaning in Italian and. Uh, mm. And English? It, it's a reinterpretation, I would say. Very free reinterpretation. Uh, yeah, beca- because uh, it's this classic thing of the Italian music industry that I saw many times in, in pop songs in, in Italian that they inject a multiple language. You can hear uh, Eros Stramazzotti with Tina Turner. You can hear um, uh, Umberto Tozzi with Anastasia. 
They wow. they create these songs in which uh, <laughs> the the English singer says something that uh, is vaguely <laughs> in correlated to what uh, the 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 Italian singer sings. Uh, I don't know why they do this uh, in in the Italian music industry, but uh, so that, that that's why I didn't like it. Sorry, I'm a bit uh, probably. Mm. I forgive you. I yeah. forgive. You. Mm, thanks. This thanks. Time. Yeah. Anyway, I I love the song. It's really a nice ballad, and in the end, this is uh, something that Matthew uh, wrote during the pandemic because he was alone, and so he was feeling all this alone thing. He was uh, creating a lot of uh, piano and voice solo stuff. And apparently they discussed about putting this song into the the record because, I mean, the other two weren't playing and he was surprised that both Priest and Dom wanted to have it in. Uh, Anto, uh, you sound a bit too prepared and a bit too competent <laughs> this time because you know all this information. I, I, have a, I, I have a long piece of toilet paper. I'm, I'm winded and, uh, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I I had uh, uh, my cat brought uh, toilet paper to me, and there were some notes on it. I don't know who put them there, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I have to say I'm, I'm unacceptable. I will uh, resign <laughs> my. <laughs> I will provide yeah. my resignation within the. Uh, 24 hours. Everyone is fired. Please yeah. don't. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, but th- this is another song that's very unusual for news because they never had something like this. And um, it was something they missed in their catalog and they said, yeah, let's put it there. And yeah, but I really, really loved it. Also, the lyrics can be very powerful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So easy. Hello. Give us a second, second <laughs> choice. A second choice or another one that I really love. Uh, you make me feel like it's Halloween. <laughs> awesome. Campy. I don't know. Uh, I want to. I. I mean, it's my favorite. One of my favorite because I want to dance like in Thriller. Uh, when I hear the song, you know, like uh, doing the zombie moves uh, and uh, all the cool stuff that only uh, Michael Jess- Jackson in uh, in Thriller and uh, the Backstreet Boys in uh, Backstreet Boys. Everybody. Back. Yeah. Uh, everybody was the, the title of the song. I don't, I don't remember, remember if the title. I guess, so. I guess it was everybody and then in parentheses there was the... <laughs> and other ways there, back straight back, uh, back, straight back. is a right. Everybody. Everybody. Okay. Oh, no. What's going on? I, I don't remember. One of the two was with in parentheses, so okay. whatever. Okay, but I remember uh, like a horror thing dancing. So yeah, yeah, it, yeah. it gave me that move and made me very happy. So I wanted to dance and uh, yeah, that uh, triggered uh, um, a person on the tube me while I was listening to the song to uh, call uh, a, like uh, the, the security. But that's another story. <laughs> Personally, if I have to say something about the song, I had the feeling they just among themselves they wanted to make a challenge. Okay, we need to include a, a Halloween song that doesn't completely fit the 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 tone of the album, and they just did because they can. Why not? And it's super fun, according to me. The the church organ is just super fun. Let's talk about the church organ. That in the end. <laughs> It takes like the um, Toccata and Fugue in D minor from Bach. Oh. <laughs> so the, the last chords are from there, and uh, it, I really loved it. It's awesome. I mean, also, I, I have to say, it, it really feels like a fun song and whatever, but the lyrics are about domestic violence during the pandemic. So. <laughs> <laughs> that that's the Halloween part, let's say. That's not the the best, but yeah. That's true. And I, I have to say your toilet paper is particularly competent with uh, Bach. <laughs> yeah, come on. So but he also says that he loved 
classical and jazz music when he was a, uh, a kid, but he felt That's like he was not good enough, so he said, ah, let's do rock, you know. Why not? But you can really, you can really see all of this, uh, hear all of these influences in all of their records. In the, uh, also in the chord progressions and uh, sometimes they just steal a piece. Like uh, in the end of Thrones, there was a piece from uh, Pierluigi da Palestrina that was, they, wow. they just changed the words to, to match the drone concept album theme. But uh, it, it was exactly, I don't remember which piece, but I mean, that's wow. it. Wow. I'm, I'm astonished. <laughs> Speechless. No, the Astonishing is a Dream Theater album. <laughs> no, <laughs> please, come on. <laughs> I have only one thing that I want to say here, uh, which is a masturbation. Just, <laughs> just because. Just, just because. It. Just yeah, because. Because. Re- reset the, the, the to, atmosphere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there was too much. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> Makes yeah. sense. Makes so, sense. So, and I would say that uh, we should go a little industrial metal with uh, One Stand Down. Uh. What do you say about that? Because yeah. I, that's the other head banger in the top three for me. Can we say that Dom's drumming really makes the song and I think the whole album because he's really those bass drum hits in the in the verse of One Stand Down are really awesome. I just love them. So, yeah. yeah. And, it, and it's really electronic and at the same time so heavy. Mm. Also, I really loved it. And I when I heard it as the first single, I was like, yeah, they're back. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. <laughs> yes. Because I, I also didn't love too much uh, simulation theory. So when I heard this, I was like, Me neither. wow, wow. Okay. <sighs> now we're talking. It, it, it's also uh, my top song for the album because it's really amazing. And yeah, it's crazy. It just goes from the completely electronic verses with the the bass uh, completely pumped up from the uh, from there to the metal uh, core breakdown. It what <laughs> you just listen to it and you're completely the face. <laughs> exactly, you're the face. <laughs> Yeah, it's a totally awesome song. In fact, it's my fourth uh, in the ranking. Mm. So it's um, it's really awesome. Uh, yeah, when they came out with the single, I said, wow, that, that's uh, they, they created a massive hype for me for the album. Mm-mm-mm. Definitely. Okay, so I'm done with my top three because this was also my first place and this is this time. Yeah, to to say what I I said all my top threes, so I will talk ah. about the will of the te- the people because I, I really let's talk about we, le- we left on. it completely out. <laughs> uh, I want to add a thing uh, that uh, a person really close to me. So uh, there there is some fun fact uh, about uh, what we said previously about this song mm-hmm. that sounds like a lot uh, the beautiful, beautiful people by M- Marilyn Manson mm-hmm. and summertime blues the two interesting things is that uh, I met one of our listeners so there is people that actually listen to this podcast that is, uh, is impressive <laughs> and he told me that now he cannot listen to Will of the People anymore because every time he's thinking of uh, the beautiful people <laughs> and another listener told me that actually uh, the song two, f- f- two. Num- big, <laughs> num- <Yeah>. big numbers <laughs> The big data. Yeah. Big data. <laughs> Terabytes of data. Totally random. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, the, the second listener said that you can sing Jungle the Mighty Jungle on top of the song too, and it works. <laughs> wow. Let's yeah, try. To try that. <laughs> yeah. Start saying, Aimawe, Aimawe, Aimawe. It fits perfectly. Awesome. I will have to try. 
<laughs> Next challenge accepted. Yeah, that, that, that's uh, the only thing I wanted to say about the will of those people. And uh, I'll let you guys continue. No, I mean, there's nothing more to say, honestly, because the, the, the bridge is just identical according to me. It's a, it's, a, it's a surprise for me that they didn't get sued until now. Uh, yeah, sorry. I said I was stopping to talk, but actually the, the other thing I wanted to say about that, in my opinion, probably this is the last Muse song of all the, the, the one in the album. Probably. I'm not sure. The chorus is quite musy. Okay. The falsetto okay okay fair enough but um, <laughs> i didn't find many elements this time in this song i i think the point is they took some ideas also i mean the will of the people the will of the people the will of the will of the people it's really that thing it's written rhythmically the same i mean when people said uh, we also uh, named the summertime blues from uh Eddie Cochran, if I'm not wrong, and mm-hmm. if you listen to what he sings in the verse, it's almost the same. But what really works is the mixing of the two. So it's taking two ideas completely different from two completely yeah. different worlds and mixing, mixing and matching them in whatever way and, and comes something that's new and uh, I mean, I, I really love also this song. I think it's the funniest one, <laughs> let's say. Yeah. Also to hear it to me. Uh, it's just good vibes in some way. And in the end, he, he said this is uh, like an anti-establishment thing, but more of a parody of whatever he said during the uprising. And he, he was kind of uh, making fun of the guys of the capital attack in the... <laughs> 2021. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah, because this is kind of a populist uh, parody. But in, in the end, it's, uh, yeah, I, I think it's really fun. I think it would work a lot as a concert song because it's, it's very um, danceable. Singable. It's easy to work. <laughs> I mean, I, I see a whole stadium screaming the will of the people. That, that would be amazing. But in in the studio album it's just okay it's good it's a good song yeah okay guys uh, just an honorable mention for me is euphoria which according to me perfectly mixes electronic again and rock elements it's very muse it's very good song but it didn't make the top three for me yeah i love the disco feel in the yeah. uh, in the verse and the chorus really reminds me of uh, Revolt from Drones. Mm. But it, 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 the mix is uh, awesome, yeah. And it, it, it's also kind of uh, this uh, sense of uh, happiness and security just before we are f***ing <laughs> so, <laughs> Exactly. It's really feels like... <laughs> that's really nice. Should we talk about the, I mean, the Queen Report that's Liberation or... Because it really feels like Queen. Was not only my impression. <laughs> no, I mean they wanted to do something really operatic and bombastic, and it just comes out Queen-like. So. What? Operatic, operatic. Operate. How do you say? Operatic. Yeah, that's okay. Like like a very famous uh, operating song from the seventies, rock song from the seventies. Wink, wink. wink. <laughs> you have to say it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Speak clearly, man, because... Okay, no, I have to say that I had the feeling that uh, uh, when uh, Matthew Bellamy sings uh, uh, Thank You, We Had Enough, uh, sounds a bit like Bohemian Rhapsody. Ah, yeah, definitely. Oh, so uh-huh. Also the choir and uh, really high range. Yeah, concept, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We can map it to the second law, in my opinion. Yes, a bit, definitely. Yeah. In that sense. Or maybe the, the resistance also has something like that, I think. Mm, yeah. Yeah. The end, Verona, what do you think about that? <laughs> I think it's the less inspired, probably. It's very simple, according to me. 
Uh, I've never been to Verona, so (laughs) it's hard to review this song. Uh, But uh, I I agree. Uh, It has uh, a song with potential, but it's not very well used because I I loved uh, the guitar with the delay in combination with the synth. But then uh, there is something that is missing to to bring it to the Mm -hmm. next level. Of coolness. I think the vocal lines do not really, they are not particularly interesting, what, what he sings. I think that thematically, lyrically, the matching with the pandemic situation and what Romeo and Juliet passed, uh, went mm-hmm. through in, uh, in Verona. Uh, the, the poison of our, on our lips, can we kiss with poison on our lips? It's kind of related and that was a i think the most interesting part but in, in the end i don't love song because of lyrics so yeah this is i think the most skippable of them <sighs> definitely yeah. yeah well so i think we did our rundown so mm-hmm. yeah i guess it's time for the polls oh god the votes. <laughs> who's gonna start yeah, easy. Oh no! Oh, I'm yeah. going to okay. Oh, oh, maybe. <laughs> uh, so for me is uh, uh, seven dot five uh, notes played with the arpeggiator. Oh wow! <laughs> uh, just because uh, I, I, I maybe it's because uh, I, I was looking for something. A bit new, mm. Mm, and uh, maybe the next album is going to be something uh, amazing that is going to blow my mind. But uh, uh, it's Muse, hundred percent Muse, Muse recipe uh, wrapped with Muse uh, magic dust, <laughs> and uh, it's a great, it's a good album. I, I like it uh, and very easy to listen. But uh, it's just uh, I wanted more. Like a, a twist, uh, some grated uh, cheese on top of it, and uh, I didn't find the grated cheese. Ah, that's <laughs> okay, Francis. Okay, okay. Before giving the score, I have to make my boomer moment because uh, uh, no. while <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have to. I have. To. Are you telling me that you listened to the record on tape? No, 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 <laughs> no. Was it released on tape? Vinyl. Let, let me check. Let me check. <laughs> check it. R- right now, that <laughs> prices you go on and then. I'll go on. Uh, no one listens to me anyway. But <laughs> no, guys, I, I just can't understand uh, how the just the more uh, the most innovative uh, and eclectic uh, band uh, nowadays is, is a trio of guys who's they're almost in their fifties. So. According to me, it's crazy. And I uh, also learned this new expression in English, which is uh, cookie cutter, which is like made with a stencil. Because the, the music, oh. according to me nowadays, is mostly cookie cutter. It's just uh, new bands are just uh, all the same stuff. And then you just listen to three seconds of this album and you say, okay, this is Muse. This is something uh, no one else can do, according to me. So for me, to close this boomer moment, uh, is uh, 9 out of 10 masks. Yeah, wow. I really liked it. Just to let you know, they were selling the album on tapes wow. as well. I lo- oh. Just for you, Francis. <laughs> I love them. I love so, them. So for uh, $10.98, uh, they were selling. Uh, they are not available anymore on the website. No. But it, it was possible to buy the song on tape. And there were three different cassettes with three different colors as well. You <laughs> just give me like the, the best news and then you crush all my hopes. Uh, you're saying you don't have it, but we know you have it. Okay? <laughs> just, just, just don't deny it. Come on. Uh, I don't know what you mean. <laughs> I know, Francis, uh, that you are the one that uh, puts uh, that pictures online uh, with the, the cassette <laughs> the, 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 and, and the, the pencil, pencil saying, <laughs> and, and saying there are many people that don't understand what this means. 
<laughs> 2,000 people will not understand. I know that yeah. you are one of them. <laughs> nice. And and so yeah. So for me, yeah, I, I also have to say you're right, Francis. They are few of the people. And one of the other is Jack White, and he's also yeah. not really young. So, I mean, <laughs> but it's like that. I guess people that comes out of the 90s or the, those uh, that started in that moment in time mm -hmm. probably have still this different mindset probably i don't know but anyway going back to the score i guess what are you what are you trying to say francis i was about to say yeah everyone who gets out of the 90s except for metallica let's see turn now Go on. <laughs> they, they came out from the from the 80s in fact yeah but they, they lived in the 90s i mean uh, that that's true but, uh, and yeah. Yet. Yeah. Mm. yeah, anyway, Sorry. for me, <laughs> I, I think that this is kind of the, I don't know, the perfect summary of their career. And in some way, this is uh, uh, a nine beautiful people, uh, will of the people uh, <laughs> out of ten. In the jungle, the mighty jungle. I'm sorry, I had to do that. I had to do that. Cool. <laughs> So, yeah, guys, that's it. We are at the end of the episode. And uh, yeah, I think whatever what is left to say, apart from uh, Bella, Bella, beautiful there. <laughs> uh, big, yeah. big hello. Big that hello. And say. yeah, see you. See you. I don't think see you hear you on the next podcast on the next episode bye uh, we, we won't uh, hear them they will hear us yeah so we will uh, never know you are, you are anything <laughs> yeah yeah well, whatever bye and sorry i ruined the, 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 the situation <laughs> yeah bye leave us a comment on spreaker and write us on our facebook and instagram pages bye Bye. And Twitter. You will see my pictures there. Send the tape pictures. We are trying to okay. to greet these guys from <laughs> since two, ten minutes. Please, uh, Izzy, <laughs> do your thing. Bye. Do your thing, Izzy. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Ciao, ne. Uh, Stopperiamo. Sono disconnesso, sono disconnesso, mi sto riconnettendo. Ciao Izzy, sono ancora disconnesso, spero che mi perdonerai per questa cosa, ma la rete. E mi sono disconnesso. Mannaggia. Ciao Izzy ancora, sono di nuovo disconnesso. Boh. Magari mi riconnetterò a un certo punto. I'm disconnected, I'm disconnected, I'm disconnected, I'm disconnected, I'm disconnected, I'm disconnected. Mannaggia. Izzy mi spiace, va così oggi.